I can begin by saying that I completely agree with the previous speaker that climate change is the biggest game that humanity has ever faced, except that it's not really a game because human survival actually depends on getting this one right. And if it is not controlled, um, terrible things will happen. Um, already 400,000 people every year are killed by climate change. But this is an inspirational event and there is no inspiration to be had by talking doom and gloom. And it is not the best way to start a movement, going back to that excellent video. Um, someone dancing and saying, we're all doomed, is not likely to get that many followers. Um, and of course, Martin Luther King did not inspire a movement by giving a speech saying, I have a nightmare. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, that's a quote from Ed Miliband, I should say that. Uh, he was quite a good climate change secretary and he used to say that in his speeches. Uh, Martin Luther King, of course, said, I have a dream, and what I'd like to say in the remaining eight minutes and 47 seconds is a bit about my dream. Now, there is a large but in my dream, and that's about changing my mind and accepting things that I was previously vehemently opposed to. Uh, so I will come to the but, but just to try and outline the dream. It is possible to be healthier, happier, and richer if we control climate change not only than if we do not control climate change, which frankly is not hard because most of us will be dead, uh, but healthier, happier and richer than we are today. Because we can get our energy from renewables, which as the name suggests, will not run out. Um, we will not be suffering extreme weather. We will not be suffering um, the need to be nice to nasty governments in parts of the world that we'd rather not be nice to. So we won't have to uh, run our foreign policy on the basis of who, ha who has the energy because renewables are spread all over the world. And there are enormous quantities of renewables that we could and should harness. If uh, an area of the Sahara, about 300 miles square, was covered with solar panels, that would provide enough electricity, not only for Europe, but for the whole of North Africa as well, if it reaches Europe's level of electricity use, which it should in human development terms. So there is plenty of renewable energy. The uh, solar panels are not so good in the UK for obvious reasons, but uh, in the Sahara, they are enormous. And in the UK, we have enormous potential to develop wind energy, uh, both on our, in our countryside, maybe don't like them, not in my backyard, but they don't like that. We all have to speak out against them, but offshore, plenty of seas around the UK, and we can get lots of electricity from there. And we can use the electricity not only to um, uh, power our laptops and so on, but also to uh, drive cars and to heat our homes rather than gas, which is what we use at the moment. So there's an enormous potential to move to renewable electricity. But, and this is the downside, um, it is going to take us a long time to get there. To be 100% dependent on renewable electricity and renewable energy overall uh, is going to take probably 50 years minimum. Uh, Martin Luther King's dream took 40 years to come to reality with the election of Obama, if that is the combination of his dream. It's not necessarily so because Obama's not perfect, but having a black president was certainly part of the King dream. Um, and it is going to take us even longer to get to a 100% renewable energy system. Um, politicians, as I'm sure you all know, they're very fond of setting targets, not in my term of office targets. NIMTO is the particularly uh, favoured approach. Um, and in Denmark, which is the most uh, advanced in terms of energy policy of any of the EU member states, uh, they have set themselves a target to be 100% renewable by 2050. That's not in the term of office of the current government, uh, probably not in the lifetime of many of them, but um, it is achievable. The rest, of, the rest of us, including the UK, we are on about 5% um, renewables at the moment, so it's going to take us an awfully long time. The EU, which is also very keen on setting targets, the EU has set 
itself a target to be 20% renewable by 2020. Uh, the fact that all these targets uh, match the date 2020 is just about sound bites. It's not about the uh, analysis of what was economically sensible or anything else. Uh, but it sets a target. Okay, that target must be met. That still requires 80% of the bridge to be crossed. And we therefore have to think, what are we going to get use to get our energy from whilst that bridge is being crossed so that the climate is not completely ruined? And the previous speaker showed slides showing just how serious the threat is. Um, so we need other low carbon bridge technologies. That's not a great soundbite. It doesn't trip off the tongue particularly well, but um, it is an accurate description. Get energy from other forms of low carbon whilst we are moving to a renewable economy. So what are those other forms of low carbon? Well, one of them is carbon capture and storage, which also doesn't trip off the tongue particularly well, um, which is, or sometimes it's called clean coal, but that's a misnomer because coal will never be clean and more people are killed in coal uh, mines every year than uh, in virtually other, in, not virtually, in, in every other energy source. Coal is the most dangerous form, even leaving climate change aside, coal is the worst form of energy. Um, so it's not clean coal, but it's clean -er coal, uh, less damaging. Uh, but carbon capture and storage has not been demonstrated at scale. It hasn't been demonstrated throughout the production and generation process. So it is an untried technology. How much is it going to cost? How long is a piece of strength? Nobody has any idea. So to say all the low carbon bridge technology eggs should go in that basket is taking an, an enormous gamble. Um, therefore, we have to look also at nuclear power, and it's not very comfortable this week talking about nuclear power because uh, the UK has again failed to find a way of disposing of the waste long term, and yesterday Central Company pulled out of their plans to build new nuclear power stations in the UK. But nuclear power is an essential low-carbon bridge technology. It's not cheap, and it's not without risks. It produces waste, but the waste is much easier to deal with than carbon dioxide. Better to keep the waste down here than put it up there, where we can do absolutely nothing about it. Carbon dioxide is a form of waste. Um, proliferation of weapons has always been my personal uh, main concern about uh, nuclear power. Every state that has nuclear weapons has developed nuclear power as well. Uh, and that is a clear route to developing nuclear weapons, as we're seeing in Iran at the moment. So um, it pains me to have to agree with Henry Kissinger, but Henry Kissinger has just suggested that there should be an internationally controlled nuclear fuel bank, which would enable everyone else, uh, everyone who wants to, to develop nuclear power without the proliferation risk. So that is an essential part of the way forward. Uh, and the other thing that the UK and the other nuclear powers should do is give up our nuclear weapons as we promised to do in the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty in 1973 and have done nothing else, nothing about it since. Uh, now when I came to this conclusion that nuclear power was necessary as a low carbon bridge technology and I'd worked against nuclear power at that stage for 20 years and I thought I've been uh, reasonably prominent. I was running Greenpeace for a few years, and I would have been reasonably prominent against nuclear power. I'd been and demonstrated against nuclear power stations and so on. Uh, and I thought that I had an obligation to say, OK, I was wrong, and it is necessary to have nuclear power for the interim. Um, and I said this to some of my friends and former colleagues, and some of them former friends. Uh, and they said, um, a number of them said, um, you may be right about the technology, but surely those bastards don't need our help. And they used rather strong language than that, but I thought that was the best way to put it. Um, and I thought, well, I could just sit on my hands and say nothing. But having spoken out against nuclear power, I, I, I felt some kind of obligation to, to say I was wrong and, and say so. Uh, and uh, the downside is that no one's remotely interested in my views on anything other than nuclear power. Now, renewables, I've been saying the same for 20 years, so they're, they're bored of that. Uh, nuclear, they seem to like to hear my views. Uh, but I think it was right to speak out uh, because we must all do everything.
to try and control climate change. And, and that's my last message to you, is that um, we must be inspired, but we must also work very hard. And inspiration is great, but it's, it's not enough if it's not acted on. So my final plea to all of you is to do everything you can. And even if that involves changing your mind and abandoning positions, abandoning deep held beliefs that you've held for your entire life maybe, but you, you must all, in my view, we must all do everything we can to try and control climate change.